Next up, we are joined via video link by the CEO of Gabather, Michael Robin Witt, who is joining us uh, virtually from Södertälje. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. So I'll uh, go ahead with uh, the slides that I have for this meeting. And uh, we have a few questions, I believe, at the very end. So thank you very much for this opportunity to present Gavater. And I'll give you a snapshot of where we stand at Gavater now, and also a little bit uh, looking ahead into the future, or what we have planned with, uh, with Gavater for the next uh, year or two with our projects. So Gavater comes from a combination of the words Gava and therapeutics. And Gava is a neurotransmitter system we work with. And therapeutics is what we want to develop targeting this neurotransmitter system. So what we're doing actually is developing new therapies against mental disorders in the general area of mental health. So one of the key things in, in, in Gavater with the projects that we're working, we work a lot with cognition. Cognition is a, a key feature in all mental disorders and actually a key feature of healthy uh, mental activity and it's the way that we react to the world the way we experience the world and the cognition is how we process the information that we get both from an emotion and a reason point of view and how we react to the world so in the moment that uh, this process is uh, is um, inhibited or at least de debilitated like you can see in this slide then we have a problem and uh, we cannot really react to the world in a, in a proper way because we experience the world in, in a way we cannot make sense of it. And this can be from a very slight, very annoying perhaps uh, 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 dysfunction to very severe ones where we actually do not understand the world at all anymore. And that's actually a key feature in many issues of mental health and many issues in, in mental disorders that we experience the world in such a way that we cannot understand it and we can uh, the cognitive processes are de deficit and we are acting in, in it in a strange way and that gives us reason to pathology. So it is the restating of the balance in the brain of the neurotransmitter systems I'm going to talk about later that we're working with at Gavater. So once you have functioning uh, processing, both emotionally and from a cognitive point of view, you can react to the world in a proper way. So the cognitive effects uh, are actually abundant in many mental disorders, many issues of health, mental health. This can be diseases from depression, schizophrenia, anxiety, uh, bipolar disorders. All these uh, pathologies have actually a segment of it where you have some sort of cognitive uh, uh, dysfunction. And uh, Mental health is a very big issue in, ge in general global health. And uh, as you can see in this slide, 320 million patients suffer from mental disorders alone. This is a very, very low number. And you must see in this uh, array of uh, potential indications, diseases that we have set up here, things like uh, substance abuse, for example, we haven't even uh, taken up, but it's definitely something that uh, could be on this list of mental disorders. And uh, if we put up mental disorders in, a, in this um, table, basically, and you look at the top row and you see the different disorders, everything from Alzheimer's to schizophrenia, you would see that uh, we highlighted and read in all the, those disorders always have a component with a deficit in cognition. And this can be very, very severe, like in Alzheimer's dementia, where your cognitive events are severely, severely impaired or schizophrenia, it's the same. But you definitely also have this kind of uh, effect in, in other diseases, in other pathologies like depression, and even things like acute stress disorders where you do have a deficit in cognition. And I think maybe everybody knows that for themselves that even in, in healthy, normal life, if you're very, very stressed, you tend to forget, misplace, or have other uh, deficits in, in cognition, at least very temporarily and very briefly, but of course not as severely if you have in, uh, in those disorders that are mentioned here in all the other uh, uh, mental disorders. The available treatments for mental disorders, 
they are of course available. Not many new ones have actually been developed. And uh, they have basically two areas where you can improve considerably. One is the time to treatment, that many of the uh, treatments that we have currently, you actually need to treat the patient with a, with a therapeutic agent for a prolonged time. It's the case in antidepressant, where it takes a while to develop the antidepressant effect in those patients. You have a very low, very strong placebo effect too. And you have also a limited number of patients that actually react to a specific uh, medication and you actually have to try your way forward. So, so it's a long way until you have a therapeutic effect. And you have, of course, a risk of side effects, which in particular in compounds to treat psychosis is, can be very pronounced and uh, very debilitating actually. And uh, you have also side effects in very compounds that have been used for a very long time, mood stabilizers, like for example, lithium. So you have the effect you have a protracted period to treatment, it takes a while, or you have no effect of the treatment at all. And that is uh, more like on a, a try and error system where you put on one medication. If it doesn't work, you try another one. Cognitive defects may persist even when you are being treated. And many of the, um, of the drugs that are being used right now actually uh, interact with quite a lot of uh, neurotransmitter system in, in the brain. And that's where they have a tendency to also have side effects. So this is what we mean by poor pharmaceutical targeting, i.e. the specificity of the targeting is uh, low. So the general idea is that the more specific you have your treatment, the less you, the chances you have for having side effects. So why GABA? GABA stands for gamma aminobutyric acid, and you have to bear with me for this acronym. It's the, it is a, a key player in the inhibitory system of the brain, and the brain in general it can be seen as a balance between an excitatory or stimulating part of the brain, which is driven by a neurotransmitter system, driven by a glutamate, and an inhibitory transmitter system driven by the neurotransmitter GABA. And it's the balance between these two neuro neurotransmitters, literally, that uh, uh, lead to a healthy brain functioning, a proper physiological brain functioning. These are the two main neurotransmitters. And of course, I've also mentioned here, we do have a lot of other neurotransmitters which are as important and very important uh, in brain functioning mood disorders, for example, serotonin, the reward system driven by dopamine. But we focus on the, the neurotransmitter system, GABA, because we have a, a model of the GABA receptor in the brain and where we can design our therapeutics, our new molecules towards this particular receptor system very specifically. So what we want to do, what we are going to do is with the compounds that we develop. But we want to reestablish, as you can see in this, this picture, there's a, a distorted, a, a dysfunctional experience. What we want to do with a compound, like the lead compound that we have, GT002, we want to actually reinstate the balance and fun functioning cognition. As you can see that we again have an uh, experience of the world with a functioning co cognitive aspect and a reaction to the world that we actually can understand it again and, and function better. And this is the kind of uh, symptoms that we try to address with, a, with the therapeutics that we develop. So what we're doing actually is we're enhancing the activity of inhibitory nerve cells. And this is not in a general way, but in a very specific subgroup. This is our hypothesis and our approach of a selective uh, group of inhibitory nerve cells in certain parts of the brain. And by that, we want to relieve the uh, de deliberating effects of def deficitary cognitive symptoms, i.e. we want to reinstate the balance and in the previous slide between excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmission in the brain with the drugs that we develop or the clinical candidates that we develop. So the market is responding. There's a large medical need. There's a little bit of a numbers game, how many millions or billions that uh, this market actually is. 
they are CNS, uh, of course, competing companies that would have developed candidates for CNS active drugs. And uh, on the right hand side here, I've just given you an example of uh, what is going on in the kind of agreements that, uh, that have been made targeting cognitive symptoms. This can be anything from uh, 650, 590 million dollar agreements uh, between uh, Big Pharma for new candidates. And these are candidates that target the GABA-A receptor system and are modulators exactly as our uh, clinical candidates are. So this is uh, the arena that we work in. Of course, drug, de drug development is a very uh, difficult business. It's a very risky business because it's, uh, even with technologies and knowledge that we have now, it's not possible to actually 100% predict the effect that you will have once you get into a patient. But you can see uh, the commercial potential that they are in this kind of, uh, in this kind of projects. And uh, we are working towards entering licensing deals, agreements in the clinical phase 1B, which uh, we are finishing now and doing another target engagement study in phase two, which is then when you look at the effects in, in a group of patients. And the latest uh, news was, of course, that uh, Biogen took over a project from Sage Therapeutics, which is a, an American pharmaceutical company, developing GABA-A receptor modulators. The most prominent one was uh, Sage 217, Svanolone, for, for depression, actually. And uh, Biogen still uh, in license this drug for an overall $1.5 billion from Sage which had uh, problems with this drug on a phase three, three trial, but the interest is still big enough for Biogen to take over. So this is the arena we are working in, and we think we have a, a new compound, actually new therapeutic options uh, with, with, our, with our drugs. So we will be a first-in-class GABA-A receptor modulator. The GABA-A receptor is a, is, a, is a very common drug target. The new thing is that our drugs target a very specific uh, uh, part of this uh, receptor system, a very selective one. We have done clinical development of our, of our main candidate, GT002. We got promising preclinical study results, I think. We have an ongoing phase one clinical program right now. So uh, we're going to do some uh, target engagement studies and we're going to talk about a little bit later. And then we're planning to do a proof of concept which is then studies when you go into patients and you look, for example, can you improve cognition in a certain group of patients, be it um, the patients that suffer from schizophrenia or depression or any other indication. When uh, I've been asked a couple of times, how do you measure uh, improvement in cognition? And I think I have from the right hand side on this slide, I have a little model of some experiments we actually did on a preclinical point of view people have been interested in and what you use here and you see on the right hand side we do an essay called novel object recognition and what you use is the natural curiosity of an animal in this case a rodent and you see on the top box the rodents exposed to two new objects the animals are curious and they look at uh, the two objects the one pink and one green and uh, 24 hours later you give the same animals and you change one of the objects and since the animal is clever it knows that one of the objects is already seen, which is the green one. And if you treat it with a normal compound, it will have, a, a, it will spend the same kind of, uh, 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 with a placebo, we will spend the same amount of time examining both objects because it's forgotten that uh, it has already seen one of them. But if you give it a, a compound that actually enhances the memory and enhances the learning during those 24 hours, it will spend much more time investigating the novel object. That's why it's called a novel object recognition, i.e. what you're measuring is the memory uh, that you have uh, started in this animal regarding what object is new and what object has already been investigated before. So it's a little bit uh, of a sideline on uh, how do you measure uh, improvement in the preclinical models. Of course, preclinical models in CNS, uh, they're Translatability to the human condition is, can always be uh, discussed, but I, I think this model is very, uh, it's very common, it's very standardized, and we have very nice and very good results of that, so we're very positive. We have uh, two patent families on this group of compounds. We got uh, IP, IP protection on the key markets, 
and we got actually covered until 2039. And uh, we've got a quite a extensive um, and very interesting approach to pattern covering. So we've gone from covering not only composition of matter for all compounds and in initial patterns, but we've also uh, patented the way of to synthesize the compound because we made some progress during the development of these drugs. And we actually have also applications for the way to formulate this compound, i.e. the pharmaceutical uh, the way of, of, uh, of uh, giving this, administering this, this drugs. And we have a very good and very promising formulation, which would uh, tend itself to a formulation that is uh, once daily and oral, which is uh, very, very good. And uh, this is something that uh, the competition, for example, I mentioned the SAGE compound, has been fighting with and uh, also solved it, but also after a long time. So we are, we, we're very happy about that. So we've completed two phase one trials in, uh, in healthy volunteers, but uh, opened the way forward. And this big jump between preclinical data that we have, and once you put actually your candidate into, into man, to done double blind and placebo controlled studies, in all, in all, all 48 in, individuals have been participating in the study. We have shown that the, the drug given orally is uh, very tolerable, we haven't seen uh, any serious side effects or any side effects at all. So the safety is very robust. The bioavailability, i.e. does the drug actually, once you give it already, also into the bloodstream. Uh, it's very good uh, so-called pharmacokinetic properties. The drug is taken up, the drug is metabolized, and the drug is excreted again, which is exactly what you want uh, to happen. Uh, with a clinical candidate. So we believe that we have a very interesting pharmacodynamic profile, which now opens the way for us to go ahead. And uh, with our clinical candidate, GT002, we're going to do a so-called uh, target engagement study. So what we're going to do is we're going to study both positron emission tom tomography and electroencephalogram EEG study. So what we're going to study is uh, how does our candidate GT002 affect the electrical activity in the brain and where in the brain it does it. This we do with a, with a PET study and the activity you study with the electroencephalogram. And it, was, it will prove that our drug crosses the blood-brain barrier, which is of course key for CNS active drugs. We have preclinical data that shows that it does so in animals, but we of course have to prove it in humans. This study is uh, a stepping stone or actually a gate to the phase two studies because once we got those results on our belt, then we can uh, increase actually uh, our interaction with the, with the partners that we already have now uh, and uh, see what kind of uh, clinical trials or what kind of indications that they can be interested in and, uh, and go ahead with that. So it's a very interesting study which we're going to uh, engage next now that we know that the drug is safe and the formulation is, uh, is, is, is very interesting one. So the clinical study based on the EG then is uh, once we have the profile and we'll profile it against the uh, non ligands of the, of the GABA-A receptor, this will be a key biomarker. So I biomarker in the sense of what does the drug do to the brain? And once you have that profile, then we can go out and see well that kind of profile, what would be the most interesting indication? As I said before, if we look at cognitive deficits, you can actually think of a number of indications we have here on the left-hand side, be it uh, schizophrenia, depression, bipolar disorder, where you can look at, uh, at the effects of, of uh, GT002 in normalizing the balance between excitatory and inhibitory, and that we should be able to see in the EEG. And with those data, then we can approach potential partners and say, this is our drug, it crosses the blood-brain barrier, it is safe, it's tolerable, it has a proper formulation, and we can go ahead with clinical trials, either with a partner or, or on our own. And uh, of course, since the, uh, since we have seen no adverse effects with, the, with the GT002, it is very good that we can also test the GT002 in patients which are already on a different kind of drug regimen, it's very difficult to find patients that are actually drug naive within the field of CNS. So what are the milestones? How did we push this project forward? 
can see it in this slide. So when I think an absolute milestone was when we got the first uh, positive results from the single ascending dose to the multiple ascending dose study in humans. And uh, now we're marching forward towards the phase 1b study still in healthy volunteers in the EG study in humans. And of course, since we have a proprietary drug model, so we are actually generating our own future drug candidates in our pipeline, which we're working on. So we are not in licensing a drug and, uh, and uh, uh, pushing it along the pipeline, but we're actually synthesizing our drug candidates basically from scratch based on the model that we have developed from the basic research, which was at the very roots of Gabatea from many years ago, which was academic research from the University of Lund and actually University of Copenhagen and, and Oskild also. So in 2022, then we plan the initiation of a clinical phase two study. Uh, we're still looking at uh, which patient group uh, could be most interesting in that, but that will of course be based on positive results from the target engagement study and the data from the EEG and the PET study that we will get during this year. And uh, this is uh, a summary where we are now. We're in GT002. We've driven it all the way from discovery uh, a couple of years ago. Looking at cognitive impairment and mental disorders, we've uh, gone all the way to phase 1B. We're now at the so, so at the borderline, at the border area towards phase two, where you can start look, thinking about patients. And it's here where we're actually looking already now, talking to a potential license takers or partners, partner in clinical trials, for example, and at, at different indications, as, as it's mentioned previously, that's the advantage of GT002 and the particular cognitive deficit indication that you can look at different pathologies different partners that might be interested in, uh, in, in various uh, indications, like the indications one, two, three, here in a phase two, once you look at patients. And at the same time, we still have our, from two pattern groups, when we're working on clinical development of other drug candidates, it's very important for us, both from the pattern group from GT00 compounns, that's GT00X, but we do have another second pattern group which is uh, structurally completely different to what we have now and there uh, in the uh, preclinical uh, trial stage right now. And I think uh, it's uh, the last slide which I have here, which sort of summarizes where we are, what we've done, a little bit of our journey. Uh, we have a growing base of patients suffering from mental disorders. And actually when I made this presentation uh, last week, uh, I mean, but to remember that uh, now there's come a, there will come quite a lot of new uh, mental health issues with the long COVID and the COVID disease. Uh, the acute COVID inf infection I think, might uh, be over soon, hopefully this summer, but certainly the CNS effects of, of COVID and the long-term COVID effects in uh, mental health will increase towards the end of this year and will be on for quite a while. So that's very new territory, but definitely something that uh, we think we can contribute with therapeutic alternatives, hopefully, and things like um, brain fog, other CNS effects of, uh, of COVID. Uh, as mentioned before, the available treatments uh, are imprecise in the sense that are not selective, many of them. Many, some of them may cause severe side effects, and it's a question of, you know, uh, being able to treat or not treat. And then, in some cases, you're actually willing to accept some of these side effects. But there's a lot of room for improvement of the current therapeutic alternatives. So what we want to do with our selective GABA A receptor ligands is we want to optimize this treatment by being very selective. And our compounds only target the GABA receptor system. We have tested it on a lot of other systems in the brain, and it is very selective. So we do have a library, and library meant in the sense of we just have a series number of compounds uh, of GABA A receptor modulators. They are based on proprietary research results, and with it, I mean research results regarding uh, uh, the model that we can have to actually design the, the molecules 
that then go into our preclinical pipeline and then eventually get pushed forwards towards uh, clinical trials. Our lead candidate, GT002, we've pushed this very hard the last couple of years to get as quickly as possible into clinical trials. We've done uh, two clinical trials in man in phase one. We're progressing this into phase two clinical studies. And uh, of course, we're looking already now, talking to, to partners, potential people that are interested in taking license or co-development or late stage development and communication of, uh, of GT002. And of course, the general idea is um, it was the first step in a long journey to take GT002 into an agreement and with the revenue that we can generate from that, then uh, develop our other compounds that we have in the pipeline and get a, a growing company, a growing uh, player in the field of uh, drug discovery and drug development for CNS targeting the GABA receptor. And I think that is uh, my very last slide. And I leave these uh, last uh, six lines to memorize for everybody. And I give it back to you. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Robin, for the presentation. Uh, if uh, Yeah, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, and um, I just wanted to start by asking you if you could give us a general overview of the competitive landscape for GT002. You've already touched upon it a little, but if you go could go into a little more detail about that. Yeah, there are quite a, there are quite a number of, uh, of players, of course, in this field. Uh, many of them are, of course, you know, not public information that we know of. But I, I mentioned the, um, the, the biggest one, are, of course, the, the compounds developed by SAGE. This is a group of compounds uh, that are within the so-called neurosteroid class. So they have a steroidal structure that are modulators of the GABA-A receptors. And um, they have very different uh, chemistry and pharmaco uh, pharmacokinetic properties to ours. But they are actually the closest that we have the compounds that are in clinical development. Now, there are a number of uh, academic groups also that are working with molecules similar to ours, but uh, we are covered by our, by our patents and uh, they're very far away from the clinics. So we are very much ahead in this field. And people, are, of course, people, I should say, potential partners are interested in, in, in GABA-A and with the publications and with the presentations that we've made, we've uh, generated quite some interest. So there definitely are competitive around, not with the molecules, uh, in the type of molecules that we have, but within the target group of GABA-A receptors, uh, definitely. And that is because that receptor system is a very good, uh, uh, very attractive drug target. So. Uh, well, great. And uh, my, my next question is uh, a little bit more speculative, let's say, but you, you made the connection with the mild cognitive impairment and uh, even Alzheimer's disease as possible indications here for GT002. Um, of course, we know that developing a drug for Alzheimer's disease in particular is, <laughs> has been very challenging. Uh, what are your hopes to, to have a drug out uh, for, to treat Alzheimer's disease? Well, we have we do have a collaboration with the uh, with the, also published it with uh, Massachusetts General Hospital. They are interested in looking at uh, at, at our uh, compounds in their models of Alzheimer's disease, and definitely cognitive impairment is uh, is of course the key feature of Alzheimer's disease. And the problem with Alzheimer's disease in general is at what stage of the disease do you get in with your therapeutic alternatives? Because if you go on at very, very uh, late stages, then it will be very difficult to achieve a therapeutic effect. But it will be very interesting if you can alleviate, delay the cognitive decline in Alzheimer's disease at an early stage with our modulators. So that would be absolutely fantastic. And um, it's again, very, very speculative. But I can tell you that the interest in, uh, in, uh, in modulators that uh, improve or, or improve cognition, or at least uh, sort of break and slow down the cognitive de decline is enormous. It's is absolutely huge, and that is because Alzheimer disease with an aging population worldwide will be a huge issue and a huge therapeutic challenge for the future. So yeah, 
there are many people that are interested in, the, in this kind of, uh, of modulation because there is no real therapeutic alternative right now. No, I'm sure. And uh, well, just one last question uh, before we, we leave. Um, so uh, is there one milestone in particular that you're looking forward to for 2021? For 2021, it will be uh, the data from the target engagement study. It will be uh, open the gate to uh, a lot of different options regarding clinical trials in the future. And, you know, uh, building up a drug development company is a very long journey. I think, like in any journey, the first step is always the biggest one. And uh, the first step for us is uh, GT002 and the partnering and commercialization thereof. So we're very excited because once we have those, that data in, it could be that we've done the first step and hopefully the first step out of many steps for the future. So it's exciting 2021 for us, absolutely. Yeah, it sounds exciting indeed. Well, we uh, definitely look forward to continue to following you within the, for the next few months. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, I thank you for the opportunity to present Gabatze and uh, we'll be in touch. Definitely.